yeah, I went to Rohig from 1991 to 1996, five years, grade nine to OAC. And I have a multitude of memories. I love this, you know, old sort of patched together building with various nooks and crannies and just a weird, awesome mishmash of people. There are so many different kinds of people from everywhere and all the different programs we had here. Uh, some of my memories come from, you know, the art studio because I did the Claude Watson program at first and so I loved the opportunity to be creative. I loved what a big role the arts had in my education. I will never take that for granted. Um, you know, from visual arts to music, I kind of took it all, even dance, which I was terrible at, which I appreciate in hindsight as sort of letting you out of your comfort zone. I remember, you know, the yearbook office and spending really long nights there and editing the yearbook in my OAC year and being here sometimes till one or two in the morning and then waking up the next day for a volleyball practice or something. I just, I loved how so much of the Earl Haig population seemed to be really into school and the school life and people really lived and breathed this place. And we used to have these fantastic big murals on the walls in the cafeteria and just in the downstairs hallways. And it just felt like people lived here. People were always in the hallways and always doing something weird or cool. My novel giant, North York Central High School, is definitely intended to be Earl Haig. Um, in hindsight, I'm not sure why I changed the name, I think. Um, I changed a couple of names of places, and, uh, but I think anybody who grew up in North York or lives in the city would probably catch on <laughs> that it is Earl Haig. My first uh, sense that I wanted to be a writer, I think, was very early on, actually. Um, when I was a little kid, I always struggled with reading. Uh, so funnily enough, my way of sort of telling stories and getting into stories was through writing. Because at some point in my life, I think maybe age eight or nine, I really struggled with reading. I don't know what was going on. In hindsight, maybe it was like mild dyslexia or something. But I found it really just a lot of work. And my way of accessing stories was through just making them up myself and, uh, and writing. And then eventually sort of writing led me back to reading, which was a nice, happy uh, place to be. But then I think, again, in high school, for sure. Um, I think being in Miss Popowell's writer's craft class was like, that's when I knew for sure. That was, a, that was a good, that was my favorite class in high school for sure. So the stepping stones to writing the novel, I think, sort of stepping stone number one was to kind of, to have the courage to finally write it. You know, I think I had a novel in my head for so long and I just finally had to say, stop thinking about it, just write it. And I think the first big stepping stone was applying for a Master's of Fine Arts. I took a year off from teaching, uh, which was a big risk to take a leave of absence and to really to put my career, teaching career on hold and you know, not get paid for a year. It's very scary as a grown up. And to finally say, you know, I'm going to do this for real, and I'm going to write it down, and I'm going to make it happen. So that was the first one. Um, and then I think the second stepping stone was to recognize that it might be something that people would want to read, that it was no longer just for me, and that it maybe had some merit, and that people would be interested in this story. Because I think at first it was really just something that I had to do. It was a personal challenge. And then it eventually became something that I thought maybe had some universal value. So sending it out to publishers was the, sort of the second big one. Um, it was scary to kind of let go of it. And, you know, and I think now the third one is to kind of see myself as a writer and not just an author of one book is to kind of keep it going. <laughs> that's, the, that's the next big challenge. Um, so advice for aspiring writers is definitely, one, it's read. Um, I think when I was in high school, I didn't read enough, and I think that's why it took me a long time to write the book. I didn't really, you know, I didn't get it published till I was in my 30s. 
And um, if you want to seriously pursue writing, I think you have to seriously pursue reading first. And second, I think, you know, it's like, it's a line from Hemingway, but you have to have the courage to write badly because the first draft of everything is going to be terrible. And you have to be okay with that. And you just have to produce because writers who don't write are, I guess, not writers, they're thinkers. So you just, the advice is to write. And I guess the last piece of advice is to show it to people, have people read it. Don't write just for yourself. <laughs>